it wasn't for this life, we would just probably be some normal dudes, you know what I mean? Who's to say? It's kind of crazy how things work out. All the time, you know, I'm just walking down the street and we're just coming from a gig like at nine in the morning and we're seeing people up at that time going to their job. And we just, we just thank God every time we see that, you know what I mean? Because to us, that's a blessing. People from the Bronx just tend to stay in the Bronx. You know what I mean? When, I was, when we were younger, yeah, we this was this was this was our home, and we never world. really this left out of out of here. You yeah. know, I mean, this was like the whole world. You know what I mean? And because we were always in the Bronx, always you know confined to you know these couple of blocks, so to go to the city was like a field trip. That window right above that church, that was our house right there. It's all about the mentality, man. And it goes back to Pops. Like, he had that mentality, like, yo, we got to get out of the Bronx. You know what I mean? He, we can't stay here. You know what I mean? If he would have never made that move, who knows? This is it, yo. This is our old house. I'm not going to knock on the door because I don't want to come in there with a camera and stuff, but this was our crib right here. Look at that all started, bro. It's crazy. There's a lot of crazy things that went on in this building, man. Like I remember one day, right, literally right across the across the hall, we're chilling in our in our apartment, and all of a sudden we just hear bang, like hard, like banging hard. Like yo, what's going on? Look through the hole, a girl is just sobbing, sobbing. We're like, what's going on? We'll call the police, man. My boyfriend just killed himself. We literally look into the door, and there's a dude just on the on the chair like that just like yo that whole day was like traumatizing like, this whole this whole floor was just like yo my crib the house flooded with cops bro like i mean this building man like has history bro seriously it's crazy and it's still like always with us like to this day like everything that we experienced just in this building alone man like i want to never take it back ever Ever, 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 ever. When you're in like a hotel room, a different hotel room every single day, with a flight every single day, you know, like, at some point in time, like, you just get like, all right. You know, it's exhausting, you know what I mean? Like mentally, physically, obviously, you know. But once, I, once I'm looking at this door right here, and I'm like, Compared to now, you know, like, it's like you said, like, we definitely, I feel like I came a long way for sure. I never even thought that this would happen, to be honest with you. Like, I just, we were just DJing, not trying to tour or anything. We didn't know that you can tour off DJing. I remember people used to tell us, like, yeah, you gotta get your bags ready, you know, you gotta start traveling. I'm like, traveling off DJ, what are you talking about, bro? Like, it just didn't make sense, you know? But now it's just, it's normal. I will escort you guys personally. My name is Brandon Hammer. I am the Arts Relations Coordinator. I'll get you guys settled here momentarily. first came out, we were 16 years old, like, playing the clubs, like, especially for Americans, that was not heard of, you know, because you can't even get into the club unless you're 21. When Stevie was young and Christian were young, we would attend church and they would see the, the musicians playing and they will mimic the musicians. Our father was a pastor, you know, so we were always in church, basically. So we had that, that lifestyle. This is where we learn everything. Basically, man, this is where we came from, from year zero to like at least 13, 14 years old. It was kind of natural for them to get into to, to, to playing drums. If a group would call at, on a Saturday night system, we don't have a percussionist, we don't have a conga player, a, a, a timbalero, can we rent your kids? They will play. That led to like us like 
doing church tours. So we were touring like New York before we were like this DJ stuff, like, but as kids, kids. It's in these places that we learned that, yo, you can move people just, as far as musically, you can move people just doing certain things, you know what I mean? Like there would be times we would do like crazy breakdowns in the service, and then when we would finish the breakdown, everybody would just go crazy. Because you know? when we would do like these breakdowns or these buildups, as soon as the, the breakdown came down... People would just go nuts, bro. The whole church would just go dog. ballistic. We played in PS1 like maybe like five, I think five years ago from now, six years ago, and that's like when we really first started DJing. Coming back now is gonna be kind of funny, man. And in the same situation, my dad's coming, my mom's yeah, coming, yeah, and my little brother's coming. Like now it's like our own party basically at, at this spot. It's gonna be a... A nice time, man. For two years, from 2003 to 2005, they, they just studied music. They were learning, you know, who put out the, the, the good music, the arrangers. By 2005, they can have a conversation with you about disco, about jazz. They knew, they showed me that they were really into this. So. Um, I had no choice but to, to involve myself in, in their quest to, to get into this game. By 2005, I was giving demos to a lot of clubs because I was really pushing hard, you know? cold calling all these clubs and say, yo, the music sounds nice, but they're young. And then eventually I, you know, I came to the conclusion I'm gonna have to do my own party. And in 2006, I met up with, with Victor Rosado and I, I told Victor, I said, Victor, you know, <clears throat> I got a, a proposition for you. I'd like to, you know, back you in a party. Like an hour later, he called me back. He said, you know, you wanna back me in a party, but there's something, there's gotta be something that comes along with it. I said, yeah, I want Steve and Chris to be your opening act. that will open up for you. We only did three parties. By the third party, Steve and Chris were blazing already in the underground. That's what really like got everybody's attention at first, you know what I mean? That's what, that was like the whole hype behind this at first. And it was cool. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that people like said, wow, these guys are young and they got to see us because of that. But then also realized that we could, you know, we could play a little bit, you know what I mean? And, that's what, you know, really got people's attention, I think, even more, because it wasn't only just a gimmick, you know what I mean? I mean, I ho hopefully not, you know what I mean? We were really trying, man. We were really playing our hardest. We were giving it our all out there. I'd be in this school with my headphones on, listening to Louis Vega mixes and, you know, whatever, and my friends would, like, straight up laugh at me, man. Like, this sounds like porno music and, you know, this and that, like, and now, them dudes are probably listening to David Guetta, like, thinking like they're hot, you know what I mean? That's why, like, I would just go to school, and a lot of time I won't even take it serious, you know what I mean? One day, I was in biology class, and then my teacher, she's reading the New York Times, and it's been, they just did a piece on us, right? And all I see here is just looking at the, the, the newspaper and looking up like this. And I like, trying to, like, make sure, like, this is me. She, she was like, Martinez, you get up here this instant, right now. Yo, I'm not playing with you. I'm like, what's going on? And she shows me the article. She's like, well, yo, this is you? I'm like, yep, sure is. The kid that's flunking your class terribly? Yeah, that's me. I was absent so many times. Like, there would, there would be times where, like, I would have to stay in class while Steve travels around to Singapore or whatever it is, just so I could finish a Regents test or a final. If I didn't do good in school, then I wasn't gigging, you know? Like, at this point, like, gigging was, a, you know, it still is, but it was, like, a privilege, you know? Like, we were, like, that was everything we had, you know? Like, at this point, we, I, was, I was a sophomore traveling to Japan and, like, Europe on the weekends. After, after fr every, every day, every Friday, after every day of school, we just go straight to the airport and then straight back on Sunday. Monday, I'll be back in school, just exhausted.
people sleeping here? <laughs> no. People sleep here as well, bro? Oh, well, yeah, here, here. I see it. Look at the tents. Oh, well, yeah. If you look at a person that does, you know, that goes through the whole motion of a nine to five and has like a regular job and a different family, his world is very different. So that person will need a different mindset, need a different set of skills or just, a, you know, he needs different things to cope with his lifestyle. We have a totally different lifestyle. We have, you know, what we need to, you know, do what we need to do, you know, as far as live this life. I don't like to put it as like we lose certain things, you know what I mean, or we don't mature in certain things. It's just, you know, some things is just, you just don't need to pay attention to it, at least not right now. Me and my brother are like literally always together. Like we, we're like the same, you know what I mean? Like we're one, you know what I mean? Like we still have different personalities, don't get me wrong, but like, especially, like when we're DJing especially, we already got that, that lock, you know what I mean? We're, we already got that bond, so we just apply, it, apply that to the DJing as well. A lot of my friends, they DJ by themselves and travel by themselves. I get to share it with somebody that you know, I love and that's my best friend at the end of the day, you know? So that, that is, a, is a really, really huge part of it too. Not many Bronx kids get to go to Ibiza and spend their summer there and live six months, you know what I mean? It's crazy. We, went, we came to Ibiza at least five years ago already, you know what I mean? So we've seen this already, you know what I mean? But with that being said, living here is a totally different thing, you know what I mean? It's a totally different lifestyle. It's so funny when you hear people talk about Ibiza, they always sound like crazy, you know what I mean? Like, and it's funny because when I started talking about Ibiza, I start catching myself sounding crazy, like, all right, I'm sounding like everybody else that talks about it with this crazy, like, you know. But it's true, man. The island has all that mysticism and, you know, just that vibe. I knew it was a special place right off the bat. Just because when you land here, like, just the energy out here is just overwhelming, man. You can't feel it unless you experience it, you know, as a whole. You know, the beaches, the parties, obviously, the food, you know what I mean? You have to kind of just take it all in. So that's what we've been doing for the last four years, man, and now we're crazy attached. No. For us, this is definitely it's like perfect, the, the, the most perfect place to be. As perfect. you can tell, we're simple dudes. We don't really need much. Nah, yeah, we're like, not extravagant. Honestly, if you would have seen the pad we had even two years before, bro, it's like a major upgrade. So this is the, this is the home away from home. I had incredible parents, man. Extremely lucky, bro. We owe them all this, man. All of this, this is, this is because of them. If you could see, like, my dad, like, helping us lug equipment at 7 in the morning. My dad was throwing his own parties just to give us an outlet to DJ and to have people hear us, you know what I mean? Like, like that's some straight up, like, Jackson 5, like, Joe Jackson stuff. We have a plan, man, just to get our family, like, support our family totally, you know, like, and make them, make them better, you know, like, we have to give everything we can to them, you know, like, they deserve everything we have. I'm proud, you know, I'm, I'm really proud, you know, um, of the, the little success, because they, I don't say that it's a big success that they've achieved. It's, it's little, you know, let's it's, it's be humble. There's a long way to go. And I always tell them, I say, you haven't made it yet because they haven't. You know, in the grand scheme of things, there's a lot of things to learn in this business. And um, they're kids, you know, 24 years old, 21 years old, they're, they're living a dream. It's a dream, man. It's just like, you know, one day you're in a, you know, in Ibiza, the next day you're playing for the Prince of Dubai. You know, the only thing that can stop them is themselves.